Hey guys, welcome back to CNC Reptiles and the third installment in our routine series. So today, let's take a look at um, how we feed our ball pythons. So just a quick look at actually how I have uh, all my frozen thawds in my freezer. <clears throat> Put them in these, uh, in these brown paper bags because quite honestly, who wants to open up a freezer and see just a whole bunch of rats? So these are actually the ones that I've already got separated out, which I'm gonna show you here in just a second. Uh, but these are the ones I've got separated out. So you can see I've got rat pups, I've got wings, and I've got smalls. So the pups um, have been what uh, the smaller ones have been eating, obviously. So this is Kalahari, Peanut, and uh, Angel have been eating pups primarily. Uh, wings, that's what, uh, that's what Bubbles and uh, Cutie have been eating. And actually, I just opened up the, the first bag of smalls, or the first uh, shipment, I should say, of smalls, um, because we're now bumping Cutie up, actually, with this meal into smalls. So let me take them out of here, and I'll show you kind of how I have these separated out. Over here, I've got my wrap pups. So you can see, I'd actually gone and done just every couple of grams when I was first getting started. Really needed to kind of figure out how big a rat kind of potentially was, right? It's kind of difficult to say, hey, you know, feed this rat a 25 gram or when you don't really know what a 25 gram looks like. So I'd actually separated these out into every two grams. You can see here 26, 27, 20, 29. And then ultimately just went to every five grams with the 30 and 34s. I do the same thing over here with my weans, just kind of have them separated out in five gram increments. So 35s to 39s, 40 to 44s, 45, 45s to 49s. And then you get over here into your small rats. Now I just actually un, uh, unwrap these and put these in their own bags. So cutie, uh, this meal is actually going up to small rats. So she'll be eating uh, one of the smaller, on the smaller ends, but we're going up by tens here. Since small rats go all the way up to 89 grams, instead of by fives, I figured we would just go up by tens. So you can see kind of how, uh, how we uh, have those listed. So ultimately what I do now guys is, I'll pull um, Cutie and Bubbles rats out. So Bubbles is still over here in the wings. So I'll pull their rats out because they are, uh, it does take them a little bit longer to, uh, to uh, defrost. So I'll go ahead and I'll get those pulled out. And then uh, actually a little bit later in the day, I come in and I pull the ones out for the other girls. So, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull out Bubbles and Cuties and kind of show you. Okay guys, so here we are in the uh, rat room. So you can see we've got the two rats pulled out for, for Bubbles and Cutie. One of the things I do like to do is orientate them how I have them set up in the rack. So Bubbles is on top and Cutie's on bottom. So the rat that I'm gonna give Bubbles is on top. The rat that I'm gonna give Cutie is on bottom. And I am currently weighing those. And so uh, so let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about why. Okay guys, so um, as you can see, again, we've got the rats back here. So a little bit about why we're doing this. Number one, uh, we're in the rat room because it does take a little bit of time for these to, uh, to thaw. We currently have it at about 79 to 80 degrees in here. So we pull them out at about one o'clock and um, come in at about five and I'll flip them over, right? So that they thaw evenly on both sides. At that time is actually when I will pull out the smaller rats so that I can feed the, uh, the younger snakes over here. Uh, Angel and Peanut and uh, Kalahari. So I'll pull those out at five o'clock when I flip the bigger rats and then ultimately just let those thaw until nine and that's when we typically feed every night is between nine and, and 9.30, okay? Now I am currently, uh, you can see I've got the scale out here. So I am currently weighing uh, the rats that I'm feeding the snakes. And the reason that I'm doing that is number one, I kind of started out because didn't really know, you know, when you say a 20 gram rat or a 30 gram rat or feed them a pup or feed them a small, when you're new into hobby, you don't really kind of know what that means. And so I'm kind of getting a general idea of a percentage of body weight uh, to a given you know size of rat that we're feeding. So I'm, I'm gonna do that over uh, a period of time and then just kind of see uh, what, what comes out of it. But even though I kind of get an idea of the 20s now, since I've gone through it with Cutie and Bubbles, and I'm going through it with the three smaller ones, well now Bubbles, or I'm sorry, Cutie all of a sudden is into smalls. And man, some of those smalls are gigantic when you look at them, almost like what I thought they were when you were looking at uh, when you were looking at the uh, the 20 grams when they're a hundred gram, you know, hatchling or or uh, what have you, right? So, so anyways, 
Um, so that's what we're doing, right? So we come in, again, we set them out at one, we come and flip them at five, I pull out the smaller ones at five, um, and then we ultimately just kind of feed them off at nine. So uh, um, another great benefit to having them here in the reptile room is the scent, right? So it's warm, and I've got my fan kind of oscillating where it's pulling the, the scent around the room, and so it really just gets them kind of amped up to eat. So at nine o'clock, um, man, they're ready to go. And ever since we've, uh, you know, we've been doing it this way, uh, haven't really had a whole lot of problems. So um, next time we come in, I'll show you kind of the rats that I've chosen for the younger ones, and then uh, then it'll be feeding time. All right, guys. So we are back in the snake room. You can see here that we have chosen the uh, the three smaller rats that will uh, feed the three snakes over here, the smaller snakes. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, 26 gram rats up here, and then this is actually a 34 gram rat. This is for peanut right there. Uh, peanuts actually going quite quickly, so you can see those are just now getting a little of the frost knocked off of them. Here are the rats that I've already flipped for the two bigger girls, and uh, we can actually go ahead and get a. If you can see that, so see they're already they're already at uh, 76, 75, 76 degrees. So thawing out quite nicely, so they'll be uh, easily up to a, a nice ambient temperature uh, by nine o'clock tonight. So that'll be the next thing. Oh, one quick thing. So like I said, I flipped these halfway through. I flipped these halfway through as well. Um, so at about 7.30, I'll come back in here and flip these guys back over uh, just to thaw those on both sides. But uh, all right guys, so next time uh, we're here, we'll go. Okay guys, so here we go. So it is it is uh, nine o'clock and it's time to feed. So we've got all of the rats out here and they are thawed. Um, just actually did a, uh, a quick test of them. They're all right at 79, between 79 and 80 degrees. Um, so that makes it really, really easy to warm up the head. So basically what I do now, I've got a hair dryer. Okay, so we plug the hair dryer in and then I hit the rats on the head with the hair dryer um, as hot as it'll go for about 30 to 45 seconds. Ultimately, what I'm looking for is um, somewhere between 95 and 100 degrees, something like that. Something for the snakes just to really hone in on. So as you know, ball pythons have the heat, uh, heat sensing pits um, right on their upper lip. Uh, that's how they find their prey. So that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, warm it up enough just so they can find their prey. So I'll warm these up and then we will uh, We'll get to feeding and I'll get this all set up so we can get uh, some interesting uh, shots of feeding. So stick around. All right guys, so here we go. So as you can see, I've got the rat right behind the head, basically right on the shoulders. And what we want to do is just present it now to Cutie. Uh, there she is. Ah, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> oh, wow, that was something. <laughs> She's always kind of fun. So uh, I don't know if you saw there, but she kind of missed the first strike there and uh, came all the way out. <laughs> she finally got it. So that'll be interesting to watch back. So we'll uh, just kind of, we always, we always want to pull on a little bit, make her work for it a little bit there. Let's get this log moved out of the way because I won't be able to close it. But you can see she got a nice tight coil around there. So that one worked. So here we go. So now we got Miss Bubbles. It did look like she was out. Yeah, there she is. She's about to go into shed. There we go. Nice strike. So Bubbles is actually about to go into shed. I don't know if you can really tell, but you can definitely see in her eyes right now. Um, I don't think you guys can tell on here from the from the angle, but. She's about to go into shed. Actually, as is Cutie. Cutie's getting pink where she's about to go into shed. So, uh, so anyways, Bubbles, if you've seen any of our feeding videos, she never wraps more than once, but her eyes are actually already st uh, starting to get um, really cloudy. So she's about to be in blue. Um, never had a problem with any of our snakes eating in blue, which is uh, not something everyone can say, I think. But um, all right, guys, now it is Peanut's turn. All three of these girls were out, so let's see she's at. Oh, there she is. Okay. There we go. Now this is by far the biggest meal Miss Peanuts had. So she, we have actually bumped her up to wings. 
but as you can tell, or hopefully you can tell, still quite in size of the biggest part of her body. I should show her over here, right in here, right? That rat's an easy, easy meal for her. So uh, she really didn't wrap that too much. Let's see here. I'm getting kind of lazy. <laughs> She, good strike, got it right on the head. All right, there we go. So three for three. Now it is Angel's turn. Now she's kind of been out and about perusing her enclosure here. Ah, I see her tail. Let's see. Where are you at, sweet girl? Oh, she's turned the other way. Let's see here. Oh. You're the wrong way, sweetie. There she comes. See how that head's going? There, good strike right on the head. There she goes, coiling nice and tight around it. That's why we always kind of pull it a little bit. You want to really kind of work for it, make it think that they're still alive. She got a nice strike on that one. One of the things I forgot to mention, so I actually do have a routine where I actually feed them all in the same order. So I go from oldest to youngest. So obviously start with uh, start with uh, Cutie, uh, then to Bubbles, Peanut, uh, here to Angel, and then last but not least is Kalahari. So let's see how she does. All right, guys, so here is our last one of the evening. Let's see here. Oh, she's right up front, ready to go. There she goes, nice strike. She actually kind of laid off that one. She is a very hard, very fast striker. I think it was just kind of the angle she was at maybe. Um, there we go. See, she got a nice wrap on that one. All of them got it right on the head, which is probably a first. <laughs> Cutie especially uh, tends to miss a little bit. So five for five. Yeah, so let's take a look. So all of them have Started. So let's take, oh wow, Bubbles is already done. Holy cow, I don't know if you can see her right there. She is already done. She'd take another meal if we had it. Let's see what Cutie's doing. Cutie's probably already done too then. Oh, Cutie's still wrapped, look at that, that's interesting. I don't think she's started eating yet. No, she is still wrapped around that mouse. Or that rat, I should say. That's interesting. Usually, she's already gone through it, but Bubbles, Bubbles wrapped hers up and went quickly. Let's come down here. Peanut's usually a pretty quick eater as well. Uh, let's see, so, yeah, you can see she's already started there. Got that mouth around it. working those jaws back and forth. Let's see where... Angel may not have had enough time to really start anything yet. I'll take that back. Looks like she's... She's coiled. She's got the head, so... It's gonna be pretty easy for her to go ahead and get started. And I'll finish up here with Kalahari, who should still just be wrapped, I don't think. Yeah, she hadn't started yet. All right, guys. All right, guys, so there you go. Uh, five attempts, <laughs> five successful feeds. Um, now, I will tell you, it's taken us a little bit of time to, uh, to uh, master or perfect this uh, this process. So we actually used to, um, we would actually uh, thaw them out and put them in a baggie and put them in hot water. Uh, the problem was it always seemed like the water found a way into the baggie and it, and it made the rat wet. And I definitely like them as dry as possible, number one, so no substrate sticks to them as the snake is eating them. Uh, but secondly, and probably most importantly, is it doesn't wash away any of the scent of the rat. Definitely need those uh, need that scent there for, uh, for successful feedings with frozen thawed. Um, we then moved to, we would thaw them out like we thawed them out, but then I just dunked their head in the water. That really hot water, that, it seemed to work, but again, seemed to be a little too wet. So now, like I said, a quick 30 to 45 seconds, depending on the size of the rat, 
um, uh, with a quick hit of the uh, the hair dryer, and boom, you know the the snakes uh, snakes eat like crazy. So. Um, again, just a, uh, a quick breakdown. We pull the big rats out at one. We flip them at five, which is four hours later. At that time, I pull the smaller rats out for the uh, smaller girls over here. Uh, I'll flip them one time before nine, so around 7.30 or so, I come in and flip them. Then we feed off at nine o'clock, right? We come in, hit them with the, uh, the blow dryer, and feed them off. And uh, we've had really, really good success. Um, it's, it's been something, like I said, it's taken us a minute to perfect, but I think, we, uh, I think we've got it down. Um, the last thing that I need to do, and, and it's something that, uh, that you do with everything, or we do with everything, I should say, is now I record it. So uh, I think I told you in one of the earlier pieces of the video, um, I am recording the, both the weights of the snakes and the weights of the rats that we're giving them um, on a feed day. And I'm doing that just so I can kind of kind of see percentages and kind of help me learn, but ultimately, hopefully at some point, help uh, some beginners out there that are getting into the hobby, help them learn as well. So um, so guys, that's it. That's our, that's our feeding night. Uh, again, had five successful feeds, so couldn't be happier about that. Um, but uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.